What is up guys and welcome back. Today is going to be all about Italy. Now this was a kind of a tough video to make because I think we all know the obvious answer as Italy is to not do anything and build a bunch of battleships and probably lend lease a little bit to Germany. You know maybe build some transports just kind of do that and never enter the war because you as soon as Italy is in the war it is a huge liability. Uh, but that's not fun. You know, if you've got a six-player game and somebody is playing as Italy, that's not what you want to do with your game. You don't want to sit there and make a couple battleships every turn and then, you know, sit there and watch. So, I've really been trying to come up with some good moves for Italy to make, and I'll tell you what, it is tough to justify them doing anything, but that's exactly what I'm going to do in this video. Italy is going to war. So, uh, we'll talk about some tech and what I think the best techs are for an aggressive Italy. And then we'll get into some of the things you can do, do in the early game to set up, to set yourself up for success and hopefully survival uh, in the end game. All right, let's go. All right, let's talk about some Italian tech here. Obviously, if you're just going the battleships and turtle route, you're definitely going to want to go with improved construction 100% of the time. Wartime economy doesn't help you at all because you're not going to be at war. And improved construction is going to make your ships cheaper and help you try to get that edge on Great Britain in the battleship department. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about Italy going to war. And so right here, wartime for an aggressive Italy might be the best tech in the entire game for any faction. Because, holy cow, it almost doubles your income every turn. <laughs> if you hit a 12, it can be more than your normal in income. So, you're hoping and praying that you hit wartime economy as soon as you, like, as soon as you possibly can. And then after that, still probably going to go with improved construction. Just because it's a very, very useful tech, in my opinion. You're going to need some extra navy out there to protect the med. And if they happen to get through Gibraltar, then you're going to need some ships out there. And also it helps you build fortifications. And maybe you'll get some factories down in Africa with improved construction. I don't know, You'd, depending on your economic situation. Uh, next up, I'm going to go with advanced artillery. Usually here, I'm going to pick advanced mechs, but the Italians are going to have a lot of fighting to do in the desert. And so I love my advanced mechanized infantry, you guys know that. But the attrition attacks are good for the Italians because you may not be attacking every turn uh, and you're not going to get that debuff where you might have to retreat with the artillery. So I think this is one of the rare cases where, in my opinion, artillery is going to get the edge over your mechs. Uh, and then next up for your tier 3, uh, you're probably not going to get all the way out here, but if you do, I think an argument can be made for attack transports just because of the way that Italy plays the game you know once you get to this point you may actually not need them because you're probably already going to have a solid foothold in Africa but it's just it's kind of one of those game time things and then my next one is going to be long range aircraft which I'm putting in the same tier as attack transports uh, because you're probably going to have a lot of ground to cover um, my gut tells me it's probably going to be long range aircraft over attack transports or you could get advanced mechs, which are never a bad idea. Not going to be able to afford heavy armor, jet fighters, or heavy bombers, lol. Advanced subs, I'm also putting in this tier 3. It just depends on the game, guys. Advanced subs are a great unit, and they can be really, really helpful for the Italians, you know, when you're trying to survive there at the end. Advanced and I sub, you've only got one convoy line worth one, so meh. Strategic rockets... <laughs> no. And the rest, radar and improved factories, eh, you know, they they could be good for you, but I'd prioritize other things usually. And then heavy battleships and heavy carriers are a big fat no, unless you're being a, a meme lord. Alright, let's get into some early game moves. Okay, Italian early game moves here. As I said earlier, it is really hard to justify getting into the war uh, because the declaration 
a war on the uh, French or the British give the Americans a boost of five to their peacetime income, which is bad. That's bad for Japan. That's bad for the Germans. That's just bad. So with that in mind, a rule of thumb that I usually try to follow in my games is if the Axis player knows he's about to give the Americans some peacetime bonus income, I do everything that I possibly can to make sure that I get more. So if we know the Americans are going to get five bucks if we, de if we declare war on Britain, then we want to get at least six, you know, hopefully more. So that's what we're going to try to set up in this game. We're going to try to get six bucks uh, when we attack the British. Uh, another route we could go is to attack neutrals, which have no effect on the United States. Obviously, it opens us up to a declaration of war. But if I'm the British player, unless I see a really juicy opportunity, I'm going to try to avoid declaring war on the Italians, uh, just so to try to force them to do it, to declare war on me as the British player so the Americans get their money. So as the Italians, we can try to attack some neutrals in the meantime. Obviously, I love attacking Yugoslavia as early as possible. You can talk with your German player um, and decide, you know, who's going to do what. As I've mentioned in my German video, I like attacking Yugoslavia with Germany because it's worth three bucks. It's, and it's, the earlier you get it, the more you're going to profit from that. So, um, but it is, it's a, it's a really good target for Italy too, uh, on their first turn. Um, you know, Italy already starts with two mountain infantry and a solid air force. So it's not going to be too much extra to try to get in there and take out Yugoslavia with the Italians. I, I think it's a, a pretty good move. Then we've also got Gibraltar here, which is two bucks for the Italian per turn and wartime bonus income. And obviously Gibraltar is massively important for both sides, the Allies and the Axis, because it controls access to the Med from the Atlantic. Knowing what the British player is probably going to do, they're probably going to reinforce it at least a little bit, so it's going to be tough to take with that fortification. And I'm not going to worry too much about this coastal artillery. It's The coastal artillery in general is kind of weak. Um, if you look at it, you get three rolls at a three. That's going to average, you know, less than one hits. So odds are you're either going to get zero or one hits against you and in that case you just damage your battleship if you get more than one then you lose a light cruiser you know sad i guess but you'll probably be fine um but they the fortification is the scary part of gibraltar those two first strikes hits can be devastating and then the the buff to the all the militia he's probably going to have in there is going to be bad for you too uh it's just going to be really expensive to take but you definitely definitely want to if he leaves it undefended or under defended, uh, swipe in there and take it, and then you drop a fortification right back on him and make it expensive, expensive for the Americans to take later on. And you see I put all these orange chips out here. This is the range from which enemy transports can get to Gibraltar. If you happen to take it, this is kind of a later game topic, but if you have American transports in any one of these sea zones, then he is in range to hit Gibraltar, and you better do something to bolster it up a little bit. So Gibraltar is worth two bucks. We've got Yugoslavia, which is three bucks, and I don't think that's going to be too hard to take. Over here, we've got two more good candidates for an early attack. Eastern Egypt, which is three bucks for the Italians, you know, one plus a two bonus income is good. And again, it's going to be probably pretty fortified, but it's going to be less difficult to take than Gibraltar uh, because it doesn't have uh, a fortification there. And maybe if they're, they've put too much there in Western Egypt, you can just bypass it, build some transports and Marines and just go around and try to jump into Eastern Egypt. And with that in mind, our last candidate here is going to be Transjordan, which in most circumstances will also be three bucks for you because in the Axis alignment conditions, Iraq will align to an Axis power that is adjacent to it. So if you take Transjordan, you're also going to get a neutral Iraq, 
which brings you to three bucks, which is good for you. And you get that infantry, so, you know, I, I'd even uh, rank it a little bit higher. And if Syria goes free French, that's probably another buck that you're going to be able to get. I doubt it's going to be super heavily defended. So honestly, I think my favorite first attack is going to be into Transjordan. I don't imagine they'll have it super fortified. They're going to be worried about Gibraltar and Eastern Egypt a little bit more. Also, don't forget about Cyprus. It's a little tiny island in here with one buck, which the British player probably will forget about and not fortify. So that's an easy buck for you to snag off of them. And there's one more thing that I want to talk about. Um, I think there's a good argument to be made, kind of in, in the mid game here. This is getting a little bit past the early game again. But if you can build an air transport with an airborne and get them to Cyrenica, then you're in range of sniping Gold Coast, which is a buck, Cameroon, which is a buck, Belgian Congo, which will probably be British and is a buck. You can even get down here to Rhodesia if you're feeling bold. Uh, Nubia you can snipe. Um, there are a lot, there's a lot of money in range of an air transport in Cyrenica. So if you've got 11 bucks to spare, I don't think it's a bad idea at all uh, to get an air transport with some airborne in there and start kind of sniping these out of the way territories that are worth money for the British. Okay, now that we've talked about our possible candidates for attack, let's talk about how we get to that point. I wanted to try to line up our attacks with July of 1939 with Germany and kind of do a rapid expansion for Italy. Um, because the earlier you can kind of get some income going, the better off you're going to be. Because your real issue is going to be the Americans coming in and slapping you around later on. So you want to get as much income as early as possible to try to even give yourself a chance to survive. So how are we going to do that? We, much like the Germans, you are going to be the aggressor. So you're going to have those first six turns to plan out your attacks exactly how you want them to go. But of course, unlike the Germans, you're only making half as much money as them. So we've got six turns. You've got 10 bucks a turn. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that means you're going to have 60 IPPs to spend in preparation for your attacks. And really, you've already got a decent little army down here. You've got five infantry, two mountain infantry, and that motorized, as well as a, a couple planes up there in Africa and Italy as well as whatever survives the Abyssinia War to really help you out. So make sure to not forget that if you have a transport, you can bring that fighter up from Eritrea through the Suez Canal on the transport back into mainland Italy. Um, you can also bring an infantry up with him if you'd like, depending on how well or poorly things went in Abyssinia. I mean, I'd always leave, you know, one or two guys down there just to protect your money in Italian Somaliland. If you're going aggressive Italy, having Abyssinia really doesn't matter that much other than, you know, keeping the free French out of there. But I digress. Um, you're going to have 60 bucks to spend. Um, so what you can do is you can plan out your moves exactly how you want them. In this scenario, I actually, which is pretty rare, I finished the heavy cruiser that starts on your build queue there because... If you're not building battleships, you're at, you're gonna need a little bit of naval help depending on what the British have in store for you. Obviously, if they've got the entire British Royal Navy in the med, you're not gonna be able to do much. You know, hopefully the German subs are kind of keeping them occupied long enough for you to maybe take Gibraltar and seal them out. So if the Brit the whole British Royal Navy is in, is in there, good luck. Uh, you're going to have to go a lot heavier in the Navy, but in this scenario, we're going to say the German subs are keeping the rest of the Royal Navy busy, and so we're going to finish this heavy cruiser and try to take out a little bit of the British Navy in the Med. Two transports are really important for you to get to kind of shuck troops between Africa and mainland Italy. I think the worst thing about their start is that they don't start with a transport, which is... It's pretty bad for them. You're spending just about one-sixth of your income on a transport just to get anything done. 
and then I like to build a second one just so you have a little bit more flexibility and then three marines to go along with those guys um, to amphibiously land somewhere in your first round whether that be Gibraltar or Eastern Egypt or Transjordan or hell even Turkey I don't recommend it but you could go for Turkey if you want to and then a bunch of artillery because as I said earlier artillery is going to be slightly better for the Italians than your mechs um, that's going to help you up if you're going into Yugoslavia uh, we've got, you know, three artillery and then three mountains to go in there with some planes, which is what I take in with Germany, um, in my Germany strategy. And it works very, very well. Uh, two planes, three mountains, and three artillery is going to handle Yugoslavia just fine. And then an extra infantry and an extra fighter, because fighters don't suffer that desert uh, debuff. And airplanes are going to help you take out Navy. Airplanes are going to be... A very good thing for the Italians to have. They were lucky to start with two fighters and attack bomber. And obviously I'm sure this isn't perfect, so I could be way out of line here. But I think choose one or two of our early game candidates that I pointed out. Gibraltar, Eastern Egypt, Transjordan, and Yugoslavia. Uh, try to get two if you can. And just depending on what the British are doing, plan your buys out exactly as you need to and remember you've only got one major factory so you can only build five units per turn so you're gonna have to trickle them out a little bit that's all I got guys best of luck as aggressive Italy because you're gonna need it uh, you gotta be aggressive you gotta be quick and you gotta be lucky so I'll see you guys next week for the USA love you